Port. I'm Amy Goodman. We continue our conversation with Gilbert Ashgar, professor at the School of Oriental and African Studies at University of London, about uh, President Obama's speech and what is happening in Syria. Um, the conflict in Syria, um, just going through some of the figures, if you could comment on the humanitarian crisis that is taking place there. Um, you've got the U.N. Undersecretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Stephen O'Brien, saying six and a half million Syrians are internally displaced. Two million kids are out of school. Uh, 72 percent of the population has no access to drinking water. More than 4.3 million Syrians have fled. What do you think is the answer right now, Professor Ashkar? Yeah, you, you gave the figures. It's an absolutely terrible tragedy. And one should point to the fact that uh, there have been a, a new dimension in all that uh, since uh, for over now a year, or m most especially since uh, last summer, which is that until now we've had uh, an, uh, you know uh, an exodus of, of people uh, staying in, in bordering countries and waiting for uh, you know the, the the time when they will be able to to go back to to their country, to their villages, to their towns, and all that. And since then, we've had a massive uh, outflow of people who have lost any hope about the possibility of, uh, you know, of this uh, whole tragedy stopping. And uh, they have been uh, they are the people who are trying to reach Europe, who have been to Europe, who have gone to, to Europe. Many of them, I mean, people even from from uh, the uh, the middle class or let's say the educated layers, uh, who uh, have sold uh, you know everything they have in the country and are trying to to make themselves a different future. Uh, abroad. And so, of course, this is absolutely tragic. But the only way to to, uh, to stop this tragedy is to, is to stop the war, obviously. And uh, I mean, and the war will not stop in Syria as long as uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad is at the helm, because he's the source. I mean, it, this whole conflict started with an uprising, which was as peaceful in Syria as it was in Egypt or Tunisia, uh, and uh, chanting the same slogans, including peaceful, peaceful, you know. And, and what was the response of the regime? Well it, well, it was one of the most brutal display of, of, of killing that we, we have seen in the region. And the, the figures of the killed kept increasing day after day after day, week after week. And then, of course, the, the, the ultimate uh, logic of this will lead to a militarization of the conflict. And then we got into this terrible civil war. But it won't stop as long as the, the, the main culprit is in power. And that's here. The, 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 if you want the the, the uh, contradiction in Barack Obama's position of uh, of uh, withholding from the opposition the me the defensive means that it has been requesting from the beginning uh, and especially anti-aircraft uh, weapons uh, um, and at the same time wanting you know a compromise uh, through which uh, Assad would step down and uh, you would get uh, some coalition uh, as you had in in uh, for instance in Yemen. That was the reference of Obama. But this cannot work, I mean, unless the regime feels it is really going to lose if it doesn't uh, go for a compromise. So what is no, Kerry I mean, doing? The issue is that so what is Kerry doing right now yes. in Russia uh, as it meets with uh, Bashar al-Assad's ally? Yes, I mean that, that's exactly the point. I mean, Russia and Iran have been backing the, the regime uh, much, much, uh, you know, uh, powerfully than whatever anyone, not, not I mean, the United States or the Gulf countries or anything, have been backing the opposition. I mean, the the, the, the imbalance of forces is uh, is quite obvious, and Russia regards uh, Syria as a main uh, strategic ally. It's a client state. You have uh, a Russian military base there, and uh, through this uh, posture, uh, uh, Russia is also sending a message to all dictators that you, you can rely on us uh, defending you much better than the United States. Look how the United States abandoned Mubarak, and look uh, how we are doing with uh, with Assad. We are, you know, shoring him up, backing him fully, and you know that explains the, the great friendship between uh, 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 between uh, Vladimir Putin and uh, Abdel Fattah Sisi. I mean the the, uh, the new dictator in uh, in Egypt, uh, and that, that, that's the basis of it, and it's uh, it's uh, reaping fruits. You know, you have countries like.
like Egypt or Iraq, actually, were, were regarded as uh, U.S. clients and were now buying weapons from, from Russia. So, uh, uh, to believe that uh, Russia will just, you know, uh, in order to, to, to get peace or anything like this, uh, get rid of, of Assad, is just uh, dreaming. The only way to, to bring uh, this kind of result would be if, 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 uh, if there was a serious support to uh, the opposition, giving it the, the, the means seriously to, to, to defend itself, and again, especially with regard to, 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 uh, to airstrikes, and, and, and then, then this would, of course, uh, create a situation compelling both Putin, Tehran, and of course, so Assad you're himself, saying the U.S. should uh, to, militarize. To seek a you're saying the U.S. should militarize the opposition. The U.S. isn't even taking on Assad. They are trying to strike ISIS. They say in Syria now. Uh, uh, the militarized the opposition is not the uh, proper term. I mean, it is militarized. It's an armed opposition. I'm just saying that they need it from the beginning. And had this done be done in 2012, we wouldn't be here now. They they need defensive weapons. They needed anti-tank weapons and anti-aircraft weapons. Uh, now they are getting, since uh, Russia entered, they are getting anti-tank weapons, advanced anti-tank weapons, and uh, th these are, this is making a difference. But they are still—they don't have anti-aircraft weapons, and this is the main edge, the main advantage of the regime has been, for all the time, uh, this total control of, of the, the, the air and this ability to, to strike not only with, the, you know, uh, fighters, but also with helicopters, you know, which are a slow-motion slow engine compared to the, 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 the jets. Uh, uh, with those uh, barrel bombs, uh, completely criminal, criminal and murderous uh, barrel bombs. And in this, the United States bear a, a major responsibility, because the United States not only did not provide this kind of, uh, of uh, defensive means to the opposition, but it prevented its allies over the region from doing it. And there is a very clear U.S. veto on everybody, from Turkey to the, the, the Gulf countries, uh, for about providing this kind of weapons. And this has been respected, given the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, influence in the region. Uh, we just went to the Calais refugee camp, which is the largest refugee camp in uh, France. We were covering the U.N. climate summit, and we went about two hours north of Paris. Uh, thousands of people are camped out in makeshift tents. They're freezing. Um, large Afghan population, another huge Syrian population that's only growing. We spoke with one refugee, Majid, and I asked him why he left Damascus. I'm scared from the war. I don't want to be to die in this war. It's not my war. Yes, everyone is uh, having. It's uh, everyone is fighting in my country. Yes, uh, so I escaped from the war. I don't want to be dead for nothing. You said everyone is attacking your country. Who? Yes. Who? Everyone. Russia, Russia, and America and Iran. Everyone. Yes. Do you think the Russian, Syrian, French, British bombing of Syria will save it? No, no, no. It's not the solution. You can't protect someone by killing someone else, you know? They can't stop the bombs here when they bomb in Syria. Yes, this is not the solution. That was Majid, afraid for us to use his last name, because his family still lives in Damascus, in an area um, that is a stronghold of Assad. But he wanted the whole area demilitarized. Gilbert Ashgar, what would that look like? I mean, he's, he's completely right. But you, you, you said he's coming from Damascus, and this is very telling, because uh, until until now, uh, most of the people fleeing Syria were, were fleeing from zones where, where the opposition is in control, for the simple reason that every zone that comes under opposition control gets bombed by the regime, which has the monopoly of air force. And whereas the, the uh, um, regime-controlled areas do not have this treatment, and you can live and you can you have seen certain in the reportage of Damascus, where life almost uh, seem, looks like uh, normal. But that's because they are not afraid of any kind of bombing coming from the sky, unlike uh, the other areas. And yet, you have now people fleeing more and more from the regime-controlled areas, because the regime-controlled areas are also under, you know, a, a very uh, 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 stressful kind of situation with the development of, uh, of uh, sectarian and mafia-like militias, uh, which are practically 
practicing, you know, like uh, mafia forces, uh, racketeering and all sorts of exactions and violence. And people are—that's are, are, why people, you know, are losing hope, like the, this measure, probably, and, and, and leaving the country. And Gilbert Ashkar, you supported intervention in Libya. Look where Libya is now, uh, if this area is not— if the weapons aren't removed, as opposed to bombing uh, every country, even enemies of each other and enemies of Assad, all bombing Syria, and more often than not, it's the civilian population bombing them together. Yeah, thank you, Amy, for uh, raising this, because I never supported uh, uh, the intervention uh, in Libya. That's uh, a canard. This is a falsity which has been ah. spread all the time. This is actually uh, I regard this. I mean, it's, uh, you are just repeating something that uh, you've heard. Yes. Yeah, so explain uh, but, what your uh, position was. This, yes. My, my position was uh, just at the beginning of uh, the intervention in Libya, when the city of Benghazi was threatened by Gaddafi troops. After this, also the, this uh, terrible speech by Gaddafi threatening, you know, to, to massacre the population there, I said I can't blame the population for welcoming the bombing that were saving them as they they were seeing it. Uh, 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 that's uh, the point, and that's all for the, the city of Benghazi. And as soon as the siege uh, uh, of the city was broken, and the, 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 w there was no, no longer any threat, I, I said, I mean, I, I'm against the bombing. I'm against the direct intervention because I know that the United States and its allies, when they intervene anyway, uh, even if it is on the side of a popular revolt, it would be to control it, to try to steer it to their own interests. And that's why I'm against them intervening directly, uh, whether through bombing or through, of course, troops on the ground. And on this, the Libyans were quite clear. They did not want troops on the ground. They made it very clear. Uh, uh, and so that's that's the point. Uh, and I'm against the bombing uh, in Syria, because I think this uh, this is leading to nothing. It's not going and uh, measured uh, in this regard is uh, the, the, the one you, you, uh, you interviewed, that the Syrian refugee is completely right. Uh, uh, what I'm saying is something else, that that the opposition should have been given the means to defend itself, defensive weapons, uh, from the start, in order to uh, really create a situation whereby the regime would have had no choice but to uh, seek a compromise. Instead, uh, 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 the West is, uh, uh, resp I mean, the United States in particular has a, ma and Barack Obama in, in particular has a huge responsibility in the terrible tragedy that has unfolded in Syria, uh, because non-assistance to to people in danger I, I regard as uh, as much a crime from the moral point of view than a di direct contribution to uh, uh, to the crime. Do you think the UN has a role here? Well, you know, the UN, uh, the role of the UN is the, what uh, uh, those who are uh, permanent members with veto rights in the UN Security Council wanted to play. So that means, uh, for the, in this case, essentially the United States and uh, and Russia, uh, and of course. I mean, uh, uh, the situation in, in Syria hinges very much on uh, an agreement uh, between these powers. But again, how do you create the, the ground for this? I mean, uh, uh, with, with uh, uh, someone like uh, Vladimir Putin, who, who seems to only uh, speak the, the language of force, I mean, you have to create facts on the ground whereby he, he would believe that, uh, that it is in his best inter interest uh, to stop shoring up the regime and uh, uh, push for a real compromise which would mean uh, assets stepping down, because there won't be any uh, 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 I mean, ending of the, the conflict and as long as he's, uh, as I said, in power at and, the helm. And so in, that's the key point. And in the and last— that's, in, that's the, 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 And in the last yes, 30 seconds, sorry. the U.S. sending troops into, or special forces into Syria, into Iraq, the war continuing in Afghanistan. Yeah, I mean, they are sending these troops in order to, uh, you know, facilitate their airstrikes, I guess, uh, and or maybe some training. But this won't change anything. Uh, we have seen those attempts, and they were they led to ridiculous results. Uh, it's not through bombing. It's not through direct intervention that uh, the United States uh, can uh, and stop the war, if ever it, it is really and seriously uh, wanting to stop that war. 
Gilbert Ashkar, I want to thank you for being with us, professor at the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London. His most recent book, The People Want, a Radical Exploration of the Arab Uprising, working on a book on recent developments in the Arab world, with particular focus on Syria and Egypt. When we come back, we go to Oklahoma City to talk about a white police officer who has just been convicted of serial rape. Why wasn't he stopped before? Stay with us. Hi, I'm Amy Goodman. I want to thank you for tuning in to Democracy Now! We are so grateful to our fans and followers for being a part of the daily conversation. By choosing a news source that's committed to the truth, you're carrying the message of independent media, reaching hundreds of thousands of people every day. In these times of war and elections, we need a media not sponsored by corporations that profit from war, but a media that's truly independent, funded by you. Democracy Now! is not paid for by the weapons manufacturers, the insurance industry or the oil, gas, coal or nuclear companies. We don't take advertising or corporate underwriting dollars. That means we rely on your donations to make our daily independent news hour possible. We need your support today to keep bringing you the hard-hitting, in-depth reporting you've come to expect five days a week. Visit democracynow.org, or you can call 888-999-3877. That's 888-999-3877 to make your holiday gift to Democracy Now! today. Thanks so much for sharing Democracy Now! stories all year long.